Hi, I'm Marge Charmley, and I'm from St. Paul. I'm Anita Kozan, and I'm from Minneapolis. Welcome to Bi Cities, a show by, for, and about the bisexual community and our friends and allies. And we are proud to tell you that we are the longest running show on bisexuality in the history of the world. So let me turn things over now to my co-host, Marge Charmley, who will introduce our amazing guest for tonight. Well, as usual, <laughs> Anita, we love this show. Yes, we do. And I am very pleased and proud to have our next guest on. And we met her, I don't know if you did, but at the Lynx Pride Night, Darcy That's where Bauman. it was, because yeah. I knew you looked yeah, so yeah, yeah. familiar, yeah. and I could not figure out where we had seen each other. So she came over and introduced herself to me. And so I said, will you be on the show? And of course, she agrees to be on the show. So without further ado, we have a wonderful guest tonight. Darcy Bauman is the chair of Twin Cities Pride. And in the opportunity that I had to talk with her prior to the show, I learned things about Twin Cities Pride that I didn't know. And so you will have the advantage now of learning about Twin Cities Pride from Darcy Bauman. Darcy, thank you for being on well, Bi Cities. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I very much yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I really want to give you a shout out about, because it's, it's special, is that you are the first woman and the first person of color to be the chair of Twin Cities Pride. Correct, correct. That's and awesome. It's, it's just a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Well, just tell us about Pride. I mean, there's so much to talk. Most people know about the Pride Parade and the festival, mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about, you know, your role and what you do and what Pride does for our community. Well, I'm the board chair for Twin Cities right. Pride. Twin Cities Pride has been in existence since um, 1972. Okay. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful organization. Um, we consider the festival and the parade like our largest fundraiser for the okay. year. And what we do is we have a community outreach fund as well. Uh -huh. And the money that we make, part of it goes back into the community okay. and different um, organizations and different events that they want to do. You know, it's interesting. I never thought about the Pride Parade and Festival as being a fundraiser yeah. that yeah. will then reach out and help the community. Yeah. yeah. And right. Twin Cities Pride, I mean, of course, Pride itself is a commemoration of the Stonewall Uprising, which this year we had the 50th. Uh -huh. uh, and so we do that as well. But it also gives our organization the opportunity to, to give back to the community. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, World Pride in a little bit. Oh. But continue to tell us about, you know, uh, Twin Cities Pride goes back to 1972. Correct. It's a big fundraiser, the parade. Mm -hmm. You do community outreach. Talk mm -hmm. about some of the other projects that Pride does. Well, Twin Cities Pride ends up being kind of a resource. We don't necessarily, that isn't our main goal, uh -huh. but we do end up, you know, answering phone calls and being a resource, and we do our very best to get back to the community on that. Um, so in Twin Cities Pride also, oh, sorry. I was interested to, yeah. so you said that people call you. People do call us. And, and, and they email you? So. They, they do call, they do email. Um, so we have a Grand Marshals reception and art show. And this year on the day of the Grand Marshals reception and art show, we got a call from someone who had just lost their partner of 30 years. Oh my and was looking for um, a grief support group, an LGBTQ oh grief support group. It just so happened that um, Jessica Flatiquil was posthumously um, given the Grand Marshal position oh, this year for wow. the parade. Okay. Um, and her widow was there, and we spoke at the Grand Marshal's reception and found out there were only two um, grief groups for LGBTQ people in Minnesota. So we were able to get the information and get it back to this person. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is amazing. I mean, because you're visible, you might be the most visible in addition to out front Minnesota, but people right. will just call you yeah. about things like that, that right. you try to assist them with them. Wow. That's awesome, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. as an organization, we do our best to get you know, the correct information back to them. Yeah. You know, we don't just say, no, that's not what we do. We do our very best to do that. Now, along with the Grand Marshals Reception Art Show, we have um, a family fun day okay. that's at Como Park. It's a free day. It's usually on Father's Day, uh -huh. but it's, it's just a great picnic and a great event. It's a, 
everyone comes out. It's free. You have, we have hot dogs. We have grilled corn on the cob. We have um, the Northern Lights Women's Softball League comes out. And so it's a day you can just sit and, you know, with the kids, watch softball. Uh, last year the twins came out with a game, you know, so and there's random games. There's room. We have other balls and stuff that people can play with. It's just a real great afternoon. In the Coho twins Park. came out? Yes, the twins are just, they've been a wonderful supporter. And so they came out and they had this little blow up thing and they gave stuff away and yeah. Oh my god. That's amazing, you know, in the Gene Treader collection that he, uh, they have at Pride, they have some old things, at least a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. about some of the sports organizations, the professional sports organizations being so homophobic and not wanting to be involved with anything like that. And so now here we have the Minnesota Twins and all the other professional sports teams that are really behind. Yeah. Correct, at the festival Pride. this year, um, we had every professional sports team except for the Minnesota Whitecaps. Uh -huh. And what, who are the Minnesota Whitecaps? They are the women's professional hockey team. Okay. And so I put a shout out to them as well, and I'll do right now. Whitecaps, we want to see you next year <laughs> out right. at the festival. <laughs> you know, send me an email. We'll get you in there. Great. So there we go. Great. That's Perfect. Great. So how was it that, you know, you and I, and well, you too, met at the Lynx game on mm -hmm. Pride Night. Mm -hmm. How did Pride and the Lynx and the sports teams, you know, how did you go about getting them involved? Because that hasn't always been the case. What, can you tell us a little bit about that history and how that worked? Well, the Lynx themselves, they've had a Pride Night for, since their inception, basically. Okay. And um, Carly Knox, um, actually, when she came to town, reached out to Twin Cities Pride. Okay. So a lot of the sports teams that are doing the Pride Nights are actually reaching out to us and asking, you know, our opinion on things, you know, what they're doing, some of the speakers they want to have, you know, trying to get ideas of the community and, and stuff. So it's very nice to have them actually reach out to us mm -hmm. when they're having a Pride Night. So. Yeah, I've seen at the, um, uh, at the Minnesota United soccer mm -hmm. game, you know, these huge pride flags yes. being waved in one section. And trans flags. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just wonderful. Yeah, this year for the, the United game, um, I was lucky enough to be able to go out on the pitch. Now normally they have a flag for each team. So what they did this year is they did the rainbow flag instead of either team. They had two rainbow flags and they had people from the community oh, go out wow. and hold those flags on the pitch. And oh, what is the pitch? Cool. I'm not that familiar with soccer. The field. The field, okay, the, field, the pitch, yes. okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so that was great. Um, I was able to, for diversity, uh, for Pride Night this year, I was able to raise the flag at the Twins game. So under uh, the Minnesota Twins flag, there was a rainbow flag. Oh, so wow. I was, I was honored with being wow. able to do that. And, and the Twins, they even come out and they, we got to see what the, the hat, the giveaway hat looked like ahead of time uh -huh. and I went back I looked at it and I photoshopped this little rainbow on the brim of the hat uh -huh. I said can we do this and they did they did oh, it they took oh my, my suggestion gosh. and they uh, just on the very brim you'll see the rainbow around it yeah. oh I mean that was a giveaway to to anyone that bought a ticket um, under the pride night there, we had a special pride night code or a link oh my that gosh. You, for Pride Night you could go in and buy one of those tickets and then you could go and pick up one of those hats. We'll have to go next year. Yeah. We want one of those hats, I right? Do. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They're great. <laughs> yeah. We like hats. We like nice clothes. <laughs> Jewelry, shoes. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we got to get all decked out with <laughs> oh, a sh definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, how did you... Are, are you from the Twin Cities? I am. I was Well, not the Twin Cities. I was born and raised in rural Minnesota. In Carver County. And what so, city? In Norwood, Young America. Well, sorry, Norwood. It was back when it was just Norwood and Young America. So uh -huh. in Norwood. My high school graduating class was 56. Okay. So and mine was small. 70, so yeah, yeah, yours was mine probably. Mine was 28. All right. Yeah, so yeah, small. we're yeah. big yeah. city girls here, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you are holding something very special. I am. Please tell us about it. This is the Twin Cities Pride magazine. This is the fall edition for um, our quarterly magazine. It started in 2018 with our Pride Guide, and they had such a great response. They're like, hey, how do you feel about a quarterly magazine? And so that's what we do. We do a quarterly magazine. Now, this magazine is basically I, what I love about it is it is written 
about the community by the community. Right. So, and there's a very special article in this particular <laughs> one. Tell us yes. about it, Darcy. Well, uh, the one, I, no, could you be talking about oh. the one that talks about um, the bisexual yes, community bi and bi-cities yeah, yeah. and Bob and the Because Conference yeah, yeah. and yes, yes. yes. I mean, there they're is all a wonder good articles. Right, but there is a wonderful article. So we're very proud of this yes. one. So if you, it's out on the shelves. I don't know how, will it be out till December? But check that out. I don't out think so till December, well, till the next one comes out. Okay. So this, well, this one will be on the shelves until they're gone. Yeah, yeah. until they're gone. Yeah. Yes, yes. and actually, it's been crazy. Um, they've gotten a really great uh, reception to this, and they'll run out. And so it's Grey Duck Media, and they'll get calls to get okay. more in. Okay, Grey so, Duck Media? Yeah, Grey Duck Media. They okay. also do the Growler Magazine. So okay. basically, anywhere you can find the Growler Magazine, you can also find uh, this magazine. Okay. And, um, yeah. And last year, the Twin Cities Pride was the first time you came out with this particular magazine. Correct. And what happened after it came out? We actually won an award. Now, you're going to ask me to remember what it was. It was the Minnesota Media Publications Association Award. That's fabulous. Wow. And we will have a sh shot of that up on, you know, oh. of you <laughs> yes, uh, yes. holding the award. Yes. And it's a very fun shot. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I was getting my headshot done for the magazine because I have the opportunity to write a little letter from the chair in each magazine. So I was getting my headshot done, and the award just happened to be sitting there. It and I'm just like, so happened to be sitting there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, he, yeah, had done, he had done shots of the awards, okay, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay, okay yeah. like, can I get a shot of that, too? And yeah. so we did, you know, some serious ones and some fun ones. And yeah. my favorite one is the fun one. Well, of course, yeah, it looks really great. Oh, so thank you. I'm glad we could share it with our audience tonight, too. Well, thank you. And it thank seems you. to me that that's a prestigious group to receive an award, you know, from media specialists. And it was a gold award, and we were just really floored and just really excited about it. Yeah. So we're just really honored and really, you know, excited that they, you know, thought of us and, and thought that much of our magazine. Now, didn't you tell us before the show that your magazine was featured at the World Pride this year, or did, am I getting something mixed up here? No, actually, okay. World Pride put an ad in our magazine. Okay. A 2018 Pride Guide. Okay. And the Spring Edition, and then this year's Pride. Okay. So, yeah. And actually, the nice thing about this, too, is if you can't get a hard copy, I suggest getting a hard copy. I love hard copies. Uh -huh. um, but you can also do go online to tcpridemag.com. Okay. And you can look at just the single stories, and you can look at um, the full issues. And the other great thing is we're always looking for ideas and always looking for, for suggestions. You know, any ideas or suggestions, you know, let us know. You know, it feels a little bit like by cities We try to showcase people that are of interest to the bi community mm -hmm. and their friends and allies, and mm -hmm. it sounds like part of your mission is to oh. do something that reaches out to the community, involves mm -hmm. the community. And it is because, you know, I don't know everything about the community. I mean, none of us knows everything. And who better to tell the stories than the people that are in the community? Yeah. You know, I, I love looking at the magazine. Yeah. Because I get to learn different things, too, about, you know, community that I may not have known of. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations on the award. And I did not know that Twin Cities Pride did this. I and, didn't you know, either. I got my first copy at the Lynx Pride Night. Oh, yep. And yeah. uh, I read it, of course, and I said, wow, that's mm -hmm. great. I Lisa. was your esteemed photographer, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. At the All Lynx right. game after you had been on the panel and you were part of making a presentation at, I think, at, uh, at the Lynx game. You were honored, too. You mm -hmm. were. No, she came up to me at the Lynx game. Well, yeah, we didn't, we didn't have anything this year at the Lynx game. Oh. You just helped. Well, I took the pictures of you, too. That's how come I recognized you. <laughs> All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, you should have been honored next year. <laughs> yeah. I was actually, uh, let's see, I heard you speak. We were okay. there um, at the Poorhouse. Poor house. The okay. Poorhouse, yeah, yeah, listening yeah. to the panel. So yeah. I actually heard your story. It was really great. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a fun night, so, mm -hmm. and I think you have something to do with me being a part of that, but. Well, you know, as I, as I mentioned, it's nice because the sports teams, when they're looking to put something together, they ask us, who do you know of in the community that might, you know, that, you know, we're looking for these kinds of people, who do you know? So we'll give them a list and it's up to them to decide and so I'm. Bada bing, huh? Yeah. 
I'd like to know more about your story. My story? Well, um, I grew up in a small town. Okay. Um, basically, one of the only minorities in town. So. Okay, wow. That had to so, be. Yeah, they have Stiftungsfest, which is a German, it's a, so it's a very German community. Okay. Um, and I grew up, um, my mother is Mexican, my father is, is German, and I just, I grew up in a small town. Um, was your father from that town? Is that how you, they met your parents? Or? No, no, okay. my father's from New Ulm. Oh my goodness, Minnesota, okay. And my mother is from the, um, the Winthrop area. Okay. And um, they actually met at a wedding. Oh my goodness sake. Oh, yeah. yeah, they met at a wedding and they lived in this, the house that I was born and raised in. They lived in that house before I was born and my brothers and I, after my mother passed, um, sold it. So oh I actually got to have that whole experience that isn't, isn't as common nowadays. Ah, wow. That's, That's amazing. Um, so they lived yeah. there all that time then. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Yeah. And as far as the community is concerned, um, let's see, I was a bartender at Lucy's for wow. years. Okay. <laughs> People, Lu Lucy's. It's like by 25th. Thomas and Western. Thomas and it Western. It used to oh, be yeah, the yeah, Blue yeah. Saloon. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, it used to be the Blue Saloon. So I was mm -hmm. a bartender there for quite some time. Um, I came out in the late 90s. Um, I was married to a man at, a time, at the time. Um, I had already had a relationship with a woman and I came out as bi and that is how I identified. That mm -hmm. is what I wholeheartedly, you know, thought and felt and, you know, to me, we all have our journeys and we all grow and, you know, I think we're all fluid in, in so many ways. Yeah. I, I love labels and I hate them at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I hate labels because I wish we didn't have to have them. But I love them because it gives people the empowerment that they need. You know, if, if they would have had the label of pansexual, you know, years ago, I think people would have thought they didn't need to fit into a box. Oh, sure. You know, and not, there were always pansexual people, mm -hmm. but it just, what, that label wasn't there. And that label really helps people find themselves without having to make themselves fit in a box. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have thoroughly lived my life. I was in a polyamorous relationship. I, you know, had a male partner and a female partner, and that's how I lived my life. Um, and my husband and I ended up getting a divorce, and I had a female partner. And as I learned more and more and more about myself, and not as a, only as a sexual being, but as what I want, yeah. you know, and, and when we spoke, you called it being home. Yeah. You know, I kind of yeah. call it my end, and you call it being home. Yeah, yeah. I am most home with a woman. Yeah. You know, when I'm in a relationship with just a man, for me, that's not, you know, that's not a full home for me. Yeah. You know, being in a relationship with a woman, it, it is. Yeah. And so that's how I identify as a lesbian. Mm -hmm. And I like to give that whole story because to me, it's very, it's very important to have that home feeling. And, yes. And that that's, that's your identity. And your identity is not only who you are sexually attracted to, it's, it's where your home is. Right. Right. And I think you know, when you and I were talking, it's about just the fluidity that some people have. Some people have more fluidity with their sexual orientation than others mm -hmm. and might identify along the continuum or, or not mm -hmm. at different parts in their lives. So, mm -hmm. you know, your story uh, is an example of that. And I mm -hmm. think it's nice that you hold on to that story as you yeah. and for what your home is. And is it okay to talk about you are expecting. Yes, yes. Yeah, you and your wife. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. We're expecting October 7th. Oh my God. Yes. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very excited. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. And I don't know, some people might not like this, but we're expecting October 7th. We do not know, you know, because to me, you know, it, one of the last great surprises in the world is, you know, what are you having? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The doctor said, I get to say what it is. Now we have the same name picked out either way. All right. <laughs> so okay. I told her, I said, I'm just going to tell you the name. All right. <laughs> She's like, okay. No. But so we're due October 7th. Uh -huh. And then um, I'm headed to Greece October 15th. <gasps> oh, my word. Okay. <laughs> for an Interpride conference. Oh, my so, gosh. Yes. 
So yes. new moms will be on the way to a world event. No, she's not going. She's not no, going. No, her and the, it, the baby's going to be too little to oh, travel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so and she's, you know, we're not sure if we're going to make it to the seventh. So which would be oh. just fine. Uh huh. So, do you believe that at 35 is a, it's called a gestational pregnancy? And not gestational, really? uh, a geriatric pregnancy. No. Yes. I have 35 is a geriatric pregnancy. Are you kidding pregnancy. me? That a woman is. who's 35, they call it a geriatric? Yes. Yes. So. Irresponsible <laughs> use of nomenclature. There was a 62-year-old woman in, in Italy that had a baby. I wonder what they'd call her if 35 is geriatric. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been watched a little. And so sometimes those pregnancies don't always make quite as Some do. Some yeah, go yeah, later. Yeah. So, but... Yeah, and this no, is your seventh child, as I recall. This is my seventh. Your yours. seventh. So my life, as I said, I've thoroughly lived my life. I have yours, mine, hours and hours. Um, so between relationships, um, I've given birth uh, to three. Okay. And the other ones are, you know, they're all mine. All right, cool. So part of the family. Part of the family. No, it's great. The ages are 29 to right now, 29 to 14. Ah. Uh -huh. So, so four boys, baby. two girls, <laughs> a little baby. and right, and the the youngest one at, that was at home just moved out in March. So, so just in time for someone else to <laughs> just move in. Just in time for, for me to go. <sighs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, being a mother is just is just such a great thing, and, and I'm so happy that we're going to be able to experience this together, and and just so excited. Yeah. It's well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank wow. you. Now. What I'm hoping for is that with the, uh, the marriage amendment, and I don't know if, if you, both of you have heard, but some areas, even though the other mother is on the birth certificate, they're not considered the legal parent. Oh boy. That's not true in Minnesota though, is it? That's where it's coming up in Minnesota. Oh, now, no. I know out front Minnesota is working on it. I know that there is, um, there's verbiage in the amendment that states that any, um, like father, any um, gendered um, word should be considered gender neutral. But there have been people that are challenging this. Okay. Oh, wow. So they're working on So that's something that's coming up in the Minnesota State Legislature. It is, and, and Dibble is working on it, I know, as well. And, and they talked about it at, um, at Pride Night. Oh, my goodness sake. Mm -hmm. So what, what they're not going to allow is you to be a, a biological parent or to be, have custody or what, what? Well, it depends on who you talk to right. and everything else. So it should be no matter what, if you're married, you're considered that other parent. parent. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that even though people are on the birth certificate, some people are challenging that you're the legal guardian that being on the oh birth boy. certificate doesn't make you the legal guardian. So that's something else that, that they're having to look at. And that's something else as we look at everything and um, people say, well, the marriage amendment passed, you know, right. rights, are, rights are not the same. And that is just an example of how the rights of the LGBTQ plus community, it, it's not the same, it's not automatic right. as it should be. So note to our audience that, you know, get out and talk to your legislators and make sure that this awful yeah. stuff doesn't pass because, you know, it's, it's one fight after another. We only have about three minutes left, mm -hmm. and you are going to Greece to be part of the Inner Pride. Please talk about that, what that is, and oh, World Pride. Definitely. Inner Pride is an organization um, from Pride organizers around the world. Okay, and uh, Twin Cities Pride is part of that. Um, we, we get together and we have a conference, we have workshops, we talk about human rights, and uh, Inner Pride actually owns the brand of World Pride. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to Greece. Um, our executive director, Dot Belsler, is on the board of directors for Inner Pride. Wow, and um, it's Inner, like within. Inter, Inter Pride. Oh, yeah. Inter. Inter. Sorry, Inter. I -N -T -E -R, Pride. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, Inter Pride. So, and it's a great organization. It gets all us organizers together and we can talk about you know, what's working, what's not working, what are the issues around the world. Um, so it, it's really great. I'm on, a, I'm on a committee and another one of our board members is on a committee as well. That's fabulous. So mm -hmm. we have representation 
in we the do. world. We do, in the yes. world. and we are actually one of the larger prides, and we have the opportunity, not only the opportunity, but the responsibility to help the smaller prides come out. And, you know, there's areas in the world where, you know, in Baron, the Barent Pride um, in the border of Russia and um, Norway is some people will come over from Russia with bags on their heads uh -huh. as they're celebrating because they're scared to go back, you know, to be recognized if they go back. Those are the kind of, of issues that we're talking about. And as, you know, as an organization, we can look at and talk about. So we have the ability to do this. And yes, we fight our own fights, but there's other people around the world that are really fighting harder fights yeah, right now. Yeah, people get killed for being yeah, people do get LGBTQ, killed. yeah. 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 Oh, here and, too, but yeah. And I would never have known about that had I not been at Interpride. And this year we had three people from Interpride that came from different areas, from Fort Lauderdale, from yeah. um, Canada, and from New York. Yeah. So you were at World Pride this I year. Was. And you were I in the was. parade. I was. And I had the, um, well, I was lucky enough to go to the opening ceremonies for World mm -hmm. Pride in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center. Oh, yep, yep. And I, I didn't know what World Pride we're was. At the one minute. <laughs> so you were there and show them. Uh, can we get a close up of. Oh, yeah. Let's... Yeah, you had a banner in the we, Twin Cities that you brought did. to World Pride. We did. So this banner was actually up at. Oh, can I, let's see. Let's do it this way instead. This banner here. This was the banner that was at Twin Cities Pride. And it has Stonewall it on it. It has Stonewall on it, and it was signed by people at Twin Cities Pride with some great messages to parents, to the community, and all kinds of just wonderful messages. The one down here, we brought that to, um, to New York, to um, World, Pride. World Pride, and, and it, was in the, it was actually in the parade. Yeah. So March, sorry, it was in the March. Please don't say it. In the March, right. yeah. In the March. March. We need to wave goodbye. I'm oh, so sorry. Yeah. But well, thank we, you so much for having oh, me, and thank you so for everything that you do. And thank you for Just everything you do. Wonderful. And please join us in our signature goodbye, which mm -hmm. is bye, bye for bye. now.